Well, lots of people still digesting the federal government's new climate plan released yesterday and still lots of questions about what role various sectors of the economy will be uh, playing in trying to uh, cut greenhouse gas emissions by 40 to 45 percent below 2005 levels by 2030. Goldie Hyder is the president and CEO of the Business Council of Canada, representing more than 150 of the country's uh, largest companies. Uh, Mr. Hyder, good to see you again. Thanks for taking time to speak with me today. Appreciate it. Good to be with you, Peter. Look, now that you've seen the long-awaited climate plan from the federal government, what's your assessment? Well, it's, uh, it's comprehensive. Uh, it certainly uh, you know, brings into play all of the major sectors that are, that are needed to be in here, because this is very much a whole of economy uh, approach. This is not about all the emphasis that's been put on primarily the energy sector, because that's one component of it. But we've got a lot of other sectors that need to do their parts as well, transportation, building, uh, housing, all kinds of things are going to be involved here. So we're, we're pleased to see the recognition that this is not about a specific sector alone, that it is about a whole of economy approach. So it's comprehensive in that sense. But obviously, that also like, leads to the, uh, the statement of, uh, you know, the devil's in the details and how do you do some of these things? Sure. We know to some extent the cart's before the horse here, right? Because the budget's coming after. We'll have to see what the budget says about some of these specific things, especially around incentive tax credits to make sure that we can do things like carbon capture. Yeah, I want to get into that. Uh, you represent companies across many sectors of the economy. Uh, is the plan clear and, and realistic for how they will achieve the emissions cuts expected of them? Or, or what are some of the unanswered questions you have? Well, I mean, there will be, uh, look, there will be many unanswered questions because a lot of this is a big bet, is it not? It's all about innovation. Uh, it's about human behavior change. It's about infrastructure. There's a lot of things that have to come together here. It's a hard transition. It's not going to be easy on anyone. And I think the recognition by government that, um, you know, for, for what? We've cut 1% in the last uh, 16 or so years. We've not even cut any in the last four years. Or I think 2015 to 2019, we didn't cut anything at all. How are we going to get to that extra, you know, 40% or 39% that we're going to need to need to do? There's a there's a need for a partnership. It's the approach that I think is important. I will tell you, representing you know, really the, the a diverse swath of, uh, of sectors across this country, that there's a commitment. There's a recognition for the need. Um, there is a, a, a financial allocation being made from a capital perspective. We need to make sure that more capital can come into the country. And that comes from predictable, stable regulatory frameworks. We can't politicize this issue as we go forward. So we're making sure that we're going to be working in partnership to bring about the capital because it's that's what's necessary to bring about the innovation. Right, Peter? And we also need people. So we want to maintain support for immigration. This is not just an environmental policy or this is a sort of a whole of economy policy that's going to be necessary. Uh, there's a focus, a, a reliance, and you sort of touched on it, on this uh, new plan and uh, carbon capture and storage technology. We expect to hear details of the investment tax credit that uh, the government's proposing coming up in the budget next week. Uh, what do you want to see in terms of an incentive that will spur the companies that you represent and others to, to invest in lower carbon technologies? I think people need to understand, first of all, that this is not just business saying, you know, uh, give us money to, do, to solve your problem. People have to recognize that, that the carbon capture is all cost to a company. There's no market for carbon. You're not going to capture it and sell it to somebody else, certainly not in the short term, unless you're able to do some kind of carbon fiber and stuff like that. So this is a social policy in many ways. We're trying to help address a social policy of addressing the crisis around the climate, which, we're, as I said, we're committed to doing. But we need a partner, and that partner has to de-risk the capital that is that is required to do this. And so that incentive tax credit is designed to say, you know, we'll we'll be a partner. We will share the burden with you. There's an ask of 75 percent of a, of, a, of the of the of the tax credit, somewhere you know between that number. Or hopefully, we'll come close to that number, mm. so that the government has skin in in the game uh, as well. But it's not just about the oil oil sector either, right? I mean, you look at the auto sector. Everything that we were talking about is electrical vehicles and critical minerals and batteries and all of that. Peter, we need a national grid. We, we don't have the electricity grid, and the demand on our grids is going to be exponentially higher. We're not getting the take up on the electrical vehicles and stuff that we're supposed to get between to, to kind of get to the place where we're not driving cars with, with gas in it anytime soon. So it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a burden that all of us share. We all have to do our part, and we can't lose sight of the fact that the customer, the consumer, because remember, everything has been right. put on the supply side. What about the demand side? Are they coming along the ride with us? Because it's going to be costly for them as well. Uh, you touched on it. Some of the critics of the plan suggest uh, the fossil fuels industry, the largest single source of emissions in the country, and uh, some of those companies or your members, uh, got away easy in this plan because they face no new regulations and no new costs immediately. Uh, what's your response to that criticism? 
Yeah, I'm not sure they feel that way. I mean, there's a very solid group of people that come together called sort of the Pathways Group or the Pathways Initiative. And it's really the major producers uh, working together to say, how are we going to make sure that we invest the capital that's necessary, that we that we have the innovation capacity to, to, to get to where we need to get to. And we have the infrastructure that's going to be necessary to doing these things, right? Uh, in fairness, they're going to carry the bulk of the burden of reducing the emissions over the course of the next, uh, you know, not just till 2030, but over till till 2050. Mm. It can't happen without these other pieces of the puzzle being there. We need to have a partnership with government and others. We need to make sure that we maintain public support for the direction and for the policy changes that are going to impact our, our, our consumer base. Uh, we, we need to make sure that we attract the capital. We need to make sure we attract the talent. And we need to, we're making some, a whole bunch of bets here, Peter, uh, on innovation. That innovation has to work. And it may be that some of the things we're betting on might not work. And we'll have to pivot and find other ways to, okay. to, to bring down the emissions. And I, all I can say is there's a commitment to doing that. And I think doing it together is in the national interest and certainly the interests of Canadians. All right. Uh, Goldie Hyder, President and CEO of the Business Council of Canada. Good to talk to you again. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care. I'm sure we will. All the best, Peter.